Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for spending your valuable time with the ADAPT 2030 channel. Volcanic Afterglow, Antarctica, also in New Zealand. Enhanced aerosols above Antarctica. Departure from normal across the bottom of the planet as the South Pole records its coldest November temperature ever. I think they're related. Year without a summer, snow above the 56 year mean. Is there something inbound with the Economist magazine cover? Life reflecting reality, air burst. Energy inflation, your ability to procure silver, global demand skyrocketing, outstripping supply. UK restaurants going bankrupt faster than during COVID and hundreds of thousands of drivers, a new tax, 12 and a half pound to bring your car into the city and a blast from the past. How the children saw our skies compared to today. And we'll start you off comparison prior and today. Any of you old enough that could have been in grade school to draw something like this back 1982, 40 years ago. Do you remember the difference in the skies, yellow sun versus white sun? Seems like the frequency and the light output of the sun has indeed changed. So let's jump down to the southern hemisphere. This should be global news. It will be in just a couple more months, and that's when the realization will hit about never-ending, escalating food prices. This is called volcanic afterglow right here in New Zealand, also in Antarctica. These are volcanic aerosols higher in the atmosphere that create this after sunset glow refracted sunlight, giving it that pinkish and reddish color. So after the Tonga eruption, we'll start to see that the aerosols are settling around the southern part of the hemisphere. Kelvin temperatures are very similar to Fahrenheit or Celsius. It's just a reading of how much a base temperature has dropped comparatively to the 30 year average. This one is 10 millibar far up in the atmosphere above the jet stream at 1991 to 2020, July, 2022. I wonder why the data is so slow and forthcoming. Well, you can see if it's cooling this much in July, four months ago, I wonder where it's ramped up to now. We can clearly see the cooling sandwiched over Southern Australia, Tasmania, New South Wales, Victoria. And looking at the data in just a slightly different manner, still using degrees Kelvin, 10 millibar temperature anomaly, but notice where it is centered, Southern Hemisphere. And over off Niwa, New Zealand's Weather Bureau, Forecaster Neva Fadef even talks about LIDAR 15 to 24 kilometers above Antarctica. Remember, six miles is 10 kilometers before the eruption. And now we have enhanced aerosols. So it would lead some credence that record cold temperatures in November, November 16th and 17th, 18, recording daily records plunging to 45.2 Celsius below zero compared with 44.7 Celsius in 1987. November reminds us to be thankful and focused on boosting our radiant health before winter. I use a potent remedy that's improved the quality of my life and deepened my sleep as well. I take C60 EVO olive oil almost every morning, have a lot more energy and mental focus all day long. Working around the farm is easier and I have a lot more endurance. Remember, health is our greatest wealth and pure C60 ESS60 really works. ESS60 is a breakthrough technology delivering the carbon 60 miracle molecule for humans and pets. Don't forget your furry friends and check out the C60 EVO holiday gift collections for everyone on your list. C60 EVO's lab has an impressive track record of 31 years and my personal recommendation. You deserve the best remedies on earth and so do the ones you love. Buy direct from the lab and upgrade your life today. 
Take 10% off your first order by going to c60evo.com forward slash adapt2030 or click on that link in the description box below. And now on with the video. So the next obvious question is what's driving the changes? And can they be forecast out to more intense change that would then affect agriculture? I've done several videos on this here on YouTube and on Bright Town TV with Mike Adams at his channel there, Friday, every other Friday, 2 to 3 p.m. live show, Bright Town TV. The signs are all around us that there's cooling in the Southern Hemisphere. Precipitation patterns are off. Planting is definitely delayed. They're having fertilizer shortages in addition to that. Third La Nina in a row, which is unprecedented. If they go into the fourth La Nina next year, it'll be the only time ever in recorded history, quote unquote, where they had a fourth La Nina. This is going to affect agriculture. And once it's realized, it's going to send everything into skittish motion. And that's when the governments of the planet are going to have to start rationing food. The realization point is so close right now. So let's take a look at some other data points that are still connected to this here in the Northern Hemisphere. So we see what's going on. It's going to continue to cool. And I just don't understand why the data delay and the release of information is July. That's the closest we can get. It's already November. What about the September temperature data? No, that's not forthcoming. July, August, September, that'd be two and a half or three months of more data that could show a tr cooling trend, which I believe it's going to. I believe it's not only going to stay where the cooler band is, but it's going to continue back toward the equator and then start to engulf parts of South America, further south, Argentina, Paraguay, Uruguay, South Africa, and obviously more parts of Australia. So as we see this crop, yields are going to decline, especially wheat. So if we look at the Rutgers Snow Lab, Northern Hemisphere snow extent, we're looking at breaking through the 56 year max on the mean there, 1967 to 2022. Year without a summer would explain this. And then if we look at the daily snow extent, this is Rutgers Snow Lab showing you in a visual format how much snow cover is on the northern part of our planet at the moment way early. What would cause this? Volcanic aerosols. Year without a summer. Tambora. 2.0 inbound. Now the snow mass for the winter is already above the 1982 to 2012 average. And if we're looking at the one standard deviation, 1982 to 2012, above that. So here's where reality matches artistic impression. 19th of November. Air bursts, bolide, and what do we see here? Right off the Economist magazine, crypto's downfall, bolide, air burst. Can you believe that? So, as our society crumbles into the collapse and liquidation phase, there will be remnants. Society will grow once again. It's a civilization cycle, just like the accidental island on this shipwreck. Life will return in some fashion, maybe not to the 100% it was before, but something will emerge from the ashes. Now, speaking of ashes, energy inflation, year over year, gas, 17.5%, electricity, 14%, utilities, 20%, fuel oil, 68%, and we need all that in our daily lives. Everything that's related to what you buy all is passed on to you. Have you noticed things becoming more expensive? So then we need to look at what's happening in the UK restaurant business. More restaurants going bankrupt than during COVID. Closures rising by 60% in the past year. 453 restaurants down in this most recent quarter. So you see how this is all interlinked now. The higher the food price gets, the higher your basic utilities get, the higher the petrol prices and everything else is passed on to you that suddenly you're just paying for the necessities. There's no other money to go around. Everything else on the periphery is just dying on the vine. It is going to amplify from here. So everything that's not core business is going to fade away. And when you have this exceedingly high food prices, non-availability, and suddenly people get angry. So you can see why governments are positioning. It's almost like they're moving chess pieces across the world right now, getting ready for this control of citizenry when they're really, really hungry and angry. 
Which brings us into collecting new taxes and new daily fee, 12 and a half pounds for any car entering into the ultra low emission zone. That would be the green. They'll probably expand it out to greater London in the blue eventually, but for right now, the white dots on the inside in central London and also that green low emission zone. So this will cover about, I don't know, 160,000 cars, 42,000 vans. That's per day usage fee. How much will that generate for the city? But you can see how this is going to ramp up from the green zone into the blue zone is where they're looking at next year, which then will be million cars. And how much per day will that take out of your pocket or they're going to pass a cost on to you? Again, it's just this revolving door of passed on costs. So if you're going to protect your wealth, you're going to need precious metals, in my opinion, not financial advice. It's just 4,000 years of history would say such a thing. So right off here, Reuters, silverheads for biggest deficit in decades. Global demand for silver is supposed to be up 16% this year. And as any inkling of a fiat currency collapse enters the general domain, that's going to run and there's going to be not enough silver out there. Although some people will part with it when it gets to a higher price, but just in general, going to your local coin shop, ordering online, whatever, it won't be there. It'll be first come, first serve. And we see India doubling its demand in 2022. So for those of you like bar graphs here, 2022 demand on the right side. Industrial might take a hit on that, but individuals hedging or trying to preserve wealth is definitely going to pick up where that was left off. And I do like this quote here, FM Alexander. People do not decide their futures. They decide their habits and their habits decide their futures. So what types of habits will you cultivate during this transition period? Getting out into the yard every day, trying to work on your gardens, trying to can, preserve white beans, cook them, turn them into microgreens. I did this last year. This is goji on the bottom and Chinese apple on the top, vodka. So now I have a, a superfood tincture here, longevity herb uh, in Chinese medicine. And it's also just a good all-around tincture for keeping everything uh, centered, if you will, in terms of gut health and anything in the throat that could then cause more difficulties through this season we're entering into. I wish you the best in your preparations. If you are looking for storable foods, my Patriot Supply and Adapt 2030. That link's in the description box below, along with tonight's images, stories, graphics, and everything you need to get yourselves and your families ready. And please remember, every 10 p.m. to midnight Thursday, Revolution Radio Studio A, Ransom Godwin and myself broadcasting on eight different platforms. We put the links up about an hour before the show starts so you can choose the venue that you like. And I do appreciate you spending your time with me. Hope you got something out of the video, and I'll see you next time.